Coming to you live from the center of Hollywood, California. What were you thinking? With, With Aaron and Scott. Real talk behind closed doors. It's not just about stupidity, but everything else that comes with it. High octane, energy driven, in your face. Get ready. It's Aaron and Scott. Oh, Scott and I just want to thank all you millions of listeners out there for tuning in tonight on this cold and rainy. It's only cold and rainy here. <laughs> well, no, no, no. It's bad back east, too. It, it is bad, bad. But yeah. we don't know. There's probably places where it's not so cold and rainy. This is our first rain in, uh, what, 42 years? Yeah. We talked about it last week because it was spritzing last week. Spit. Just spits on it's, your car. Uh, Just enough to make your car now, dirty now today, and piss you off. Today, was, uh, it's like peeing. You know, yeah, it's a full stream. It was gloomy. It was overcast. I like it. You know what? Everybody, because you know, my clients today, everyone was just so moody and just gr- and like, guys, it's one day. I had an Indian slide into the back of me today, and I don't mean that in a fun way. <laughs> but I'm bum. You had an Indian <laughs> on a horse? No, no, from, <laughs> no. That would be like wrong to say. Oh, oh, like you mean Tonto? Like, oh, oh, Indian, like hello, nice. Oh, right. That's that's I'm not that way. What? This is just completely racist. I don't, anyway, no, it's not. I ran into me, <laughs> <laughs> slid right into me. I'm sitting there at the light. I got a guy in front of me. It's raining, <laughs> and I look in the rearview mirror and I see, you know, coming, and I'm like, oh, he's gonna fuck. He hit, and there he is. So he boom. R- runs in the back of you. So I get out of the car. Yeah. I'm pissed off. Of I walk back, and he's, I'm so sorry. I slid. I slipped. I slid. I slipped. Well, that's racist. No, that's what he said. <laughs> oh, that's what he said. Okay, so then I'm being accurate. Well, I said you have any, a few I said, seconds what the, ago. I said, "What the hell's wrong with you?" Yeah. I said, "You know, it was an accident. He hit me, so he gave me his information. Yeah. I got his information." And was he nice? He got my information. Indians are very nice people. He I was will actually say. he was either yeah. scared to death or he was very nice or a little both. But he did. It was all good. That's cool. But here's what really irritated me. Yeah. I'm at Whole Foods, right? You know the bins that have the nuts, they, they, and they're like thirty of them. Yes, bulk. Yeah, uh-huh. they have a little shovel. You That's put right. A little shovel in. You put your goods into your bag. Uh-huh. So I'm eyeballing this guy <laughs> over there, some skinny guy with a big head. I'm looking at him from behind. He's in one bin. He takes the shovel. He puts the shovel in, and then he starts picking out, looking at the nuts, and he throws them back in the thing. <laughs> as, and he throws it back, and then he finds one, I guess, that he likes, and he eats it. Then he goes to the next thing. So I'm watching him, minding my own goddamn business, and I see him doing the same thing. So I go over to the, you know, the... the you didn't the, approach the, him? No, I'm because it's not my place, and I was already oh, I mad would've. enough. Well, well I, I would have thrown nuts at him. No. So I walk up to produce manager man, and I said, hey, produce manager man, come here. I said, watch this guy over here. He's eating out of the thing. He's throwing them back in, the ones he doesn't want. I don't know where he's been. He's coughing. He's he could have been picking his nose yeah. or coughing in his hand. Scratching it's his flu crotch. season. Absolutely. So anyway, produce guy walks over and stands behind him, and I and I, he's watching him, and then ding <laughs> does it again. In it, go, in uh-huh. it. No, that's not good for me. Oh, this one's too far. <laughs> this one's too tall. This one's too short. This one's just right. And then he eats it, right? <laughs> so produce guy says to him, excuse me, <laughs> sir, you can't you can eat. You can't just eat and throw things. He says, I'm sampling. Because <laughs> the sign says that you can sample, but you can't, you know, I don't right. know the signs. He's selecting what he wants, so, what he doesn't want. He says, you can't touch the food. So Dingling says to him, I didn't. And I said to him, you sure as hell did. Yeah, That's you where did. I came out. I walk up. I said, you've been sitting here picking out the ones you don't want, throwing them back in the bin, and then eating the ones you want. He goes, no, I didn't. I go, you're fucking lying. He goes, what the hell is that? That's right. That's the- Oh, Bingo! That's yeah. a holster. Oh, that's a. That's a. I'm gonna blow your. Uh, yeah, that's a chamber. That's yeah, right. So I uh, seriously. <laughs> so I said, I thought somebody took a fucking picture. I'm like, oh, anyway. You so saw that last time. So, did I? It sounds like that a was picture. the sound effect that John did. Yeah. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> yeah. So I said to him, I he says, I said, you're a fucking liar. He says, you're a fucking liar. I said, I'm a liar. So I drop my stuff. I walk up. That's right. Then the produce manager mm-hmm. comes up and says, hey, you got to stop this. You're not at a bird feeder. And you're not a fucking bird. I would have reached my hand into that bend. 
I would have grabbed a handful of nuts, and I would have thrown it right at the guy's face and said, I think that's uh, what you just put in there. Yeah. And I would have given it back to him. Yeah. This kind of shit drives me crazy. Absolutely. I don't like germs. Germs bother me. Yeah. A little bit of a clutter mess, it's okay. But a germ, I don't yeah, like I mean, germs. I'm kind of, well, yeah, I know. How <laughs> stupid is somebody to walk up to a bin <laughs> and just start, no, he had the sense, dingy boy here had the sense to use the shovel. Yeah. He takes the little scoop. It's like a kid's thing at the beach, you know, their little sand mm. shovel and their nuts. So anyway, he puts his shovel in and he had the sense how, to how do How did all of this end? Uh, uh, <laughs> I have to deal with him later. He's in my trunk. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. You, you, he had this. I would believe the shovel, but then you start pulling the ones out that you don't want. Yeah, I swear to God, people are. And then I get rear-ended. I got some Indian climbing up my ass <laughs> on Desoto Avenue. Yeah, I got picking raining. nuts and throwing them back in a bin. <sighs> what is this world coming to? God, hold on. Help I, us all. I watched this show. This lady, actually, really cool, Lissa Rankman. Yeah, uh, I saw it on a PBS special, and she talks about how you need to calm down. You know how we're always worried about eating the right foods and not eating the wrong foods and yeah. getting exercise? Right. Stress. You know how they say stress is the worst thing for you? Yes. Okay. She says <laughs> that stress is so bad. One of the emotions, loneliness, is worse than tobacco and liquor and bad food. Mm. She said loneliness. Yeah. What stress does to you, it lo- it. it brings in the bad hormones, lowers your good hormones. So she had this routine she does. You you have to, you think of a nice word and on your exhale, you let it out, like love or peace or calm or shitty nuts, I don't know. Anyway, so you're, hmm. And then it's supposed to fill yourself with good, good um, hormones. Yeah. And get rid of the bad hormones. And how do you feel about this? Well, I tried it. Yeah. And it seemed to work. And I need to do it again today since my episode at the at the market and uh, my episode with the Indian. And I don't have anything against Indians. If and he was a white guy, I'd say he's some feel, lousy white guy. How do you feel now? I feel good. You sound like a psycho. Well, no, this is <laughs> therapy moment with Scott. I'm no, just, no, I'm, no, I'm seriously. So here's the thing. I'm you, listening you to you. Flood, okay, yeah. you flood your system with good... <laughs> Good hormones, because she says that um, actually people on an average daily basis, yeah. you stress and flood your system 50 times a day with bad hormones. Mm-hmm. And sh- so eat all the fucking kale you want. It's yeah. not going to do any good. So oh. there. All right. Buy my book. All right. <laughs> anyway, let's have a moment. Or go around. And get actually, you know what? Yeah. Let's have a moment of peace. Well, sure. No, I'm Scott. Sorry. So actually, anyway, I stole this. Uh, you have so many. He's, I, I, I've seriously, got, he's got a Sunday paper. Here I've got events. so much stuff to talk about. Nothing in front of me. No papers. <laughs> Aaron's got a Sunday paper. Maybe a Sunday and a half. But it's I'm, like a phone book over there. What is, are we going to talk about? Oh, we're going to talk about. It. So, me, moi, moi, right? Who's your moi, 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 moi? <laughs> I was selected to be on the cover of a book. Very nice. That's right. I brought the book with me. What's the book called? The book. Is called Boys Town. This is this is completely legit. Can we see that, John? Oh, wait. yeah, right. What is Boys Town? Boys Town is uh, actually uh, the the guy who wrote the book. Is it a little homosexual erotic? A little bit. I but but it's nothing gets by but me. But there's there's straight. Show the camera. Well, I'm just saying there's there's show there, the picture. No, there's uh, there's gay you know characters in the book. There's straight characters in the book. Let it's a mix. This. Let me see this. But anyway, so this book takes it's a nice picture. It Hold is. on, get our alert. So, anyway, no, it's now, uh, I play this character. Actually, the guy who wrote this book, you know, because I've been writing for fitness magazines. This doesn't look Listen, like it would be gay at all. I, I know, I'm very masculine, right? Very masculine picture. Not at all. So go on. It's a really nice picture. No, but this the guy who wrote the book. Um, he basically had written this character actually after me because you know I've been you know writing for different fitness magazines, health awareness, right. and this guy's been actually following me for uh, for quite a number of years now. Nice. And uh, he he reached out to me and said, "Hey, you know what? I I did this book, and one of the characters in the book named Cole, I actually created him around you and just who you are as a person." Does he know you well? No. Well, how the hell is he making? Well, a because he reads why you? you know, because I'm kind of like the fitness guru guy, you know. I mean, you know, kind well, of. Well, what does the fitness kind of a, guru guy do on Saturday I'm kind at of three? A cele- he doesn't know. I'm kind of a uh, celebrity in the fitness world, but uh, anyway, no, he wrote a he wrote a book and put a character uh, based around me, and but it takes place in Chicago, and 
And um, did you I'm, read I'm, what your character does? Yeah, in the I'm, story? I'm, a, I'm a gay character, which well, obviously. But did you read? I, yes. Did you approve of what your I character did does? Yeah. I mean, I didn't know if he was he, shooting he, heroin he, on he, Friday he nights. He finds this other guy attractive who happens to be married to a woman, and uh, this other man, uh, you know, so they kind of mingle, and it, there's, it, yeah. But the book's called Boys Town. It sounds. You like can a buy book. it on uh, Amazon bookstores. Oh. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, we have a caller. This oh. is very cool. Let me see that. No, one no, no hold, hold on, hold on. But yeah. So what I was going to say too is that Scott also has a book out. Aaron, if this is going to piss me off, I'm going to tell no, you what I'm I really serious. think of this. Did, okay, did you go not, ahead. Go ahead, John. Did he? Did, did Scott ahead. not say a few minutes ago that he had a book? This is the book that he has. It's called "Ridding Bicyclists: uh, Taking Matters <laughs> Into Your <laughs> Own Hands." Uh, Get this is up this that. is this is Scott's book. <laughs> Oh, shit. Again, reading Bicyclist, mm. uh, taking matters into your own hands. Um, Scott actually beat me, so I was going to brag about me being on the cover, and then I came across this, had to purchase it, buy it. Scott, it's an excellent book. <laughs> Thank I you. I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we, uh, it was what? fun. It was fun writing the book. Yeah. And I had to go out there in the field and experience a few things. Um, it's yeah. thick. I mean, it's... Oh, it's a lot of... There's uh, a lot of pages. There's a lot of rules about yeah. the road that don't apply to bicyclists. Right. I state each and every one of them. Yeah. Um, no, in all seriousness. Now, I'm going to say this one last time. Yeah. Bicyclists should be allowed on the road if they are able to keep up with the posted speed limit. That's right. 35 miles an hour. Exactly. Well, it's usually that. <laughs> It's usually that. You're right. Well, if they can't do it, if you don't do it Stay, in a car, you get you pulled over. You can't go 35 on your bike. Stay right. off the road. Absolutely. Right. The other thing is, yeah. they need a license. Yeah. And they need to be 16 years old, right? Absolutely. Like everything else. Yes. Like everybody else on uh -huh. the road. It's common sense. Uh -huh. We have a caller. Well, we did, but they hung up. So there you go. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Seriously? Do yeah, you see? I, I'm sure they'll call back. Uh, but yeah, but yeah. they haven't yet. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Um, no, we'll go in. Well, Let's let's go into uh, into other news because I got a lot of stuff to talk about. Can you dial them? Yeah, I can get them on the phone. Yeah, yeah, go okay. for it, go for it. Uh, because I had actually made a call from here earlier, and okay. I'm wondering if that's the person who. Is, oh, I I you know we'll find out. We'll we'll find out who this is. So anyway. Um, Hello. Oh yeah, the, you know what? Did you just call the uh, Aaron and Scott show? This is this is Scott and this is Aaron, and we couldn't take your call. Who is this? Oh, my name is Wendy Hartel. Wendy Hartel? No, high tail, like high, the opposite of low, and tail, <laughs> like the opposite of, well, uh, uh, the animal's nose, I suppose. Oh, nice. Okay, do you know who you're calling here? You have to speak it's up. It's a radio show, and I wanted to call and just say I'm a regular listener, and uh, I did call earlier, but there was no answer. Oh. Well, we're here now. How are you, Emily? Well, I, I'm fine, but my name is Wendy. And, uh, <laughs> Scott. So, what did you say my name I was? I still don't even know what her name is. I thought it was Emily. You're, can I'm you sorry, say it again? What I'm is sorry. your name? Wendy. 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 I, I remember the song, Who's Walking Down the Streets of the City? Everyone, you know that song? Yeah, the, the association. <laughs> <I love> that <laughs> so, how are you? Are you enjoying the the? What do you? Uh, okay. What I'm a stewardess. I fly coast to coast. <laughs> I usually I uh, work in first class, and oh, I have some stories to tell. Well, that sounds fantastic. How are the high skies? <laughs> well. I'm not sure. Or the Mile High Club, stories, I should say. Because they do involve celebrities. And in some cases, a bathroom uh, incident that occurred with a number of these people joining the, high, the Mile High Club. Oh, for heaven's okay, sake. Okay, i got to hear this. Okay, so fill us in. Well, I, I'd rather not give the name of the person except to say that she's a superstar and has a very toothy grin. Okay. And uh, her brother is a is a, an actor, not quite as successful as herself, but famous nonetheless. And she was up there with a uh, flying uh, first class with Henry Kissinger, who was sitting very close to her. And well, my lord, they went into the bathroom, and uh, 
there was a lot of banging and yelling and screaming <laughs> and yelping and oh my lord, I thought I'd seen everything. <laughs> but this was a nightmare because as you know, he he's a former secretary of state and <laughs> she's a famous star and oh my lord, I've never heard such a high orgasm in my life. <laughs> What was the reaction from the passengers? Really? They didn't know. I just explained to them that somebody was nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, what you're hearing, they're, they're just sick. Yeah. <laughs> and then when two... Well, you know, I, 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 and then an old lady went in there, and a, a black gentleman followed her, and I heard this. I heard him her say... Um, Leroy, don't you believe in four black <laughs> <laughs> And then I heard her say, I'm a friend of Ronald and Nancy Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought to myself, what is going on in there? You listen, gals. If you are gals in there, you need to come out here right now. <laughs> <laughs> and this one gal, the, the gal who was in there, said, "Listen, I work for the Los Angeles Rape Prevention Center." <laughs> <laughs> and the guy, I heard the guy say, "Give me the meat, get me the meat." <laughs> and I thought to myself, for heaven's sake, this is a public thoroughfare in the sense that it's a bathroom for the public, and people should not be in there with all this kind of tomfoolery. I agree. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, you mentioned Henry Kissinger. How long have you been flying? Oh, I've been flying for, well... Oh, golly. Carter was president. Let me just put it that way. Carter was president. I've been flying ever since. Oh. <laughs> mm. You must have a lot of miles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do have a lot of miles. Trust me. You know, I myself have joined the mile high club. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> With the whole defensive team, the, the whole defensive uh uh, section of the uh, Phoenix Cardinals, the Arizona Cardinals. Oh, you yeah. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, that's good. With me and about uh, seven 250-pounders. Oh, you yeah. You all fit in there at once? <laughs> well, I take them one at a time. <laughs> oh. So, anyway, do you, uh, do you enjoy wonderful. our show? Yeah. It was wonderful. Can I describe it to you? <laughs> sure. First, I went with a little one who was about six foot five, and he he got me every which way but loose. I mean, <laughs> I was up, I was down, I was across, I was against the glass, I was on the sink, I was in the sink, I was in the toilet, I was, <laughs> I was in the toilet, I'm ashamed to say. Because you know this lavatory is not, it's like a shoebox. So you must have been very. F- there's a will, there's a way. You must, you <laughs> absolutely, you must be flexible. Well, we have to be. I mean, <laughs> considering that the other stewardesses are watching your every move, and they want some of that action themselves. They're yeah. jealous of you're monopolizing the whole team of football players up there, and they're all really good looking. And you know something? I wasn't uh, offended at all by their attention. <sighs> wow. <clears throat> Oh. Are you still flying currently? Of course, but not right now. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you do any other work, ma'am? Uh, Wendy, right? Wendy. Yes. Wendy, do you? Wendy Hightail. <laughs> yes, hi, Miss Hightail. Um, do you do any kind of of uh, Miss Hightail hobbies? Loves a cocktail. <laughs> what? Excuse me. This hightail loves a cocktail. <laughs> oh yes. <clears throat> do you uh, do you do any kinds of other work? 
Hobbies. Hobbies. Uh, yeah. To, I mean, you you sound well, like an... Is my stamp collection, and of course, my small animals that I catch around in the forest <laughs> when I drive out there by myself. I have trouble for that. <laughs> oh, you. Do you have children? A husband, perhaps? I'd rather not go there, please. Oh. Okay. Uh, the children that's or the a, husband? That's what I could start to talk about. Uh, you mean the husband or the children? Both. Oh. oh, okay. Okay, so... Uh, I don't so, Wendy, wanna... what do you think of the show? Oh, I love the show. For one thing, uh, no children, which I lo- I can't stand children. I hate them all, and I <laughs> wish they were all dead. <laughs> <clears throat> and we haven't had any children on the show, Scott. <laughs> no, we haven't. We haven't had any animals either, Wendy. We haven't had any animals, no. Oh, my. Oh, we might I'll ha- still listen. Trust me, I'll be an avid listener. Oh, we appreciate oh. it. Um, so, any hobbies that you do? Well, yeah, she just well said she... I like to make exotic oh, beverages. Right. <laughs> I like to make a beverage made of uh, certain kinds of liqueurs and fruit juices. Really? Are you a heavy drinker, Wendy? No, but I'm an exotic drinker. I like exotic drinks, uh, but I like them, uh, uh, um, you know, every once in a while, like with a nice meal. I like to make a beverage and uh, like a casserole. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking, Scott? I, I think we need to have Wendy call back frequently and share more stories. Wendy, could you? Could oh, you... there are many more stories. Is your name Axel? Excuse me? No, I'm, I'm Aaron. I'm not Axel. What's your name? Aaron. Aaron, I thought you said your name was Axel. No. No, it's Aaron. Aaron. A-X-E-L. Not, not Axel like Rose, but uh, yeah, Aaron. Aaron, like E L L E N. No, that's Ellen. Yeah, Aaron, A A R O N. That's what I said, <laughs> Ellen. Yes. Ellen, what's your last? You're not Ellen DeGeneres, are you? <laughs> it's Aaron. Yes. So, Wendy. Yeah. E-L-L-E-N. It spells Ellen to me, honey. Okay. <laughs> How's that exotic drink? I, I just took a sip of it, and I did have a small beverage before I started the show. Scott, how did you and Ellen get together? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> just roll. Just, j- yes. Uh, you know what? Honestly, we met on Hollywood Boulevard. A clown introduced oh. us. <laughs> It was fun. It was fun. It was a colorful clown, and uh, actually, wasn't the clown making genitalia out of balloons? I think so. And then he was arrested. Oh, for heaven's sake. Yes. (laughs) And then he was arrested. That's right. And me and Scott have been best friends ever since. My lord. Yeah. So, um, we, Aaron had a really great idea, and it's Aaron. Yeah. Um, Aaron and I had a. Ellen and Scott. Yes. Aaron Aaron had a really good idea. He thought that uh, you should call in once in a while. Well, I would like to. That would be fun. Yes. Well, thank you so much for calling in tonight. Yes. You're both wonderful, and I hope you both get exactly what you deserve. Uh, well, <laughs> and, and likewise. Thank you. Wendy. Wendy, Have a good hi- evening, my, my, my friend. Yes, you as well. Okay, Mrs. Hytel. Enjoy your uh, exotic beverage, and uh, next time, till uh, till we speak next time. That's right. Sure Ta-ta. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. There we go. We have a new friend. Oh, I like this. Oh, my gosh. I can only imagine the stories. <sighs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm tearing. That one had me fucking laughing. <laughs> I'm tearing. My nose is watering. I got oh. rear-ended. I got some guys eating nuts and putting what he didn't want in there. Oh. Uh, I'm looking at your book. <sighs> Great. Wow. Wow. He I know. doesn't put a lot of writing in this. There's a lot of writing in there. No. What? It's like he's got like spaces. He could have had half the size of a book. No, if that, one's, just that one's just for you because you don't like the print so smashed together. I don't that's, care about that's, the print. Uh... Hey, Emmett said quickly, offering <laughs> Keith a hug. I'm glad you came. Okay. Okay. What's so, that supposed so to mean? <laughs> should we go into a, let's go into sure. some other, well, you know, this is kind of like a. I really like your picture, buddy. Thank you. Who's on the back? I don't know. Well, there's somebody else. Oh, it's another model. I don't know. He almost looks. Let's focus on. Well, f- okay, so go. Yeah. On. Sorry. Um. Anyway, so oh, I want to say so. Uh, NBC, right? 
So they yanked the uh, the Michael J. Fox uh, show off. You know the uh, you know Michael J. Fox. Well, I know he had a show, and they were helping him out with coming back. And why did they cancel it? Well, they they well they were going to do twenty. Actually, they twenty uh, seven. Actually, no, I'm sorry, twenty two episodes, but they only aired fifteen. So they and they shut it down. Okay, did they shut it down, or did Michael say, "Okay, well, I've had enough"? Well, I think the ratings shut it down because overall they only had two point two million viewers overall. Which is like a point seven in the rating. It's horrible, horrible. <laughs> and you know, Michael J. Fox is a great guy, but you know, he had uh, what does he suffer from? He's got a rough situation. Um, no, is he, it Parkinson's. Parkinson's. It's, it, I'm not sure if it is. If anybody knows, somebody could call and tell us. But here's but like you know, here's here's you know, sad. an amazing actor, you know, because he did really good in uh, you know, <clears throat> the TV sitcom. Uh, what was it? Family uh, ties. Family ties. That was funny. Yeah. And, and he was um, great in Back to the Future, but uh, but he had. I don't know if it's Parkinson's. He doesn't shake, and I think Parkinson's has. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. But, but there was there was a. I think there was a response that he had from this. Of, 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 his uh, response to well, the network to, to, to the reason why I don't know why. I can't believe that call we just got. What, <laughs> Sorry, what was go just, I don't know. Was just was just here. I, I don't know what this is. <clears throat> well, what does it say, Aaron? No, just this is Michael J. Uh, his his response to the show, I guess. Oh, that's his response. No, John's gonna play it. I am just appalled, <laughs> appalled that they took my schwafier. I mean, who do these guys think they are? I'm Michael J. Fox for Christ's sake. I did Family Ties. I was the Back to the Future. I mean, it's me, and this network is shutting me down. I'm, I mean, I cannot understand why America. Will not watch and listen to my show. Where'd you get that, Aaron? So I don't know why. What the hell are you up to? He, you come on here with your goddamn book and you <laughs> shit all over us like this. <laughs> and it is Parkinson's. You're right, Scott. Yeah, it is Parkinson's. Yeah. America. Now, do you feel bad? No. Uh, get higher. No. <laughs> higher in note. <laughs> America, they just didn't watch it. They didn't get into it. Well, I know that. He was huge in Back to the Future. But he was what's huge this we ties. just listened to? I, don't, I guess it was his, his response. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 um, so this, this, is, this is good. You know, if Wendy were still on the phone, she would reprimand you. <laughs> she on. would say, what I'm were a, you, you know thinking? What? You know what? what I'm, a, you I'm a big Michael J. Fox. I love him, by the way. Yeah, we can I, tell. I, I, We're all I, over him. Well, this is this is good. Justin Bieber back oh, in the news again, God. right? I got a headache now. I, I have Shit to. Head. This is going to explain a lot. Did they ship him home? Well, no, a crate Not, uh, with well, an ostrich. Uh, uh, Off you go. This is this, okay. <laughs> this is just crazy. So uh, Justin Bieber reportedly uh, hot boxed his private jet with marijuana. So you know, uh, which forced the pilots to wear oxygen masks. So this is prior to. So he was flying out for the Super Bowl. Okay. Right. Flies out with his his entourage. They're smoking so much fucking weed in the plane that that the pilots literally had to wear the mask. Otherwise, they would be high too. Flying. <laughs> this, They're that his, high. His private jet, right? Yeah. So they land actually, and uh, now Justin Bieber's dad, his father's on the plane. Of course he is. They're harassing his father, Justin's father. This makes so much sense. Why this kid's such a dick. But his father, they're harassing the stewardess, probably making sexual, you know, connotations, you know, whatever towards her. So she is winds up sitting in the cockpit with the with the pilots because of how bad, uh, you know, the, the situation is. Yeah. So they land. Pilots complain to the airport. And um, so the, the officials come on the board. They smoke all the weed. Right. They can smell it. They don't find it. He doesn't get charged. You know, Does that make any sense? The father, huh? The father was on there. Mr. Completely Bieber. Completely. Bieber, right? Bieber. Not Bieber. Completely. Bieber. Mr. Bieber, you sound like a stupid ass. Yeah. What a yo-yo. Hadn't he learned? No. Didn't they just get tickets together? It just makes sense Florida? why Justin is who he is. I mean, if his father's going to be an ass. Well, you know what? You know we what? need a crate that fits, too, when Justin's he goes a back dick. to Canada. Yeah. Canada. Canada it is. Yeah. The ostrich, the giraffe. Bieber and old Bieber, and they all get put in the same crate. Isn't that how they carry animals from place to place? Yeah. Put them in a crate. Yeah. We'll put that those makes so much crate. sense. Just 
Send them back. You know, I'm going to tell you something interesting about animals, and then we're going to come back to your Sunday paper. Um, <laughs> the uh, yeah. uh, This week I heard there was a whale, a very large whale. I'm not sure if it was a blue whale, a killer. It was, it was a huge whale stuck in the San Francisco Bay. It had got nets caught on it. Right. Did you hear about this? No. Drowning. The, the whale was drowning. Um, apparently somebody saw this. They called the, you know, whale safety people, whoever, and they came out. Five divers, I think, went down, started cutting the netting. This whale, you know that their eyes, they're huge. Yeah. The whale was watching every move they made. Being still, letting them do their thing. When they were finished, the whale kind of moved around swimming and came up and nudged them each in a soft, loving way as if to say thank you. The guy who was closest to her face, or right. his face, the whale's face, yeah. said the eye never left him when he was cutting this. This whale knew what they were doing. Never left him. Wow. How's that hit you? That's pretty cool. And to think, fucking people just kill these things for the joy. We have plenty of people out there that are psychotic that you can take your yeah. aggressions out on. Here's Don't a, pick an a, a whale. I mean, come on. Here, here, here's a what were you thinking moment. Okay. Right? Oh, yeah. This is a first. Certainly. A firefighter, right? We're all ears. Arrested in the act of duty. What That's, did he do? California Highway Patrol officer put an, an on-duty Chula Vista firefighter in handcuffs for refusing to move his truck while tending to victims of a car crash. Are you kidding I'm me? I'm dead serious. No, this has got to be nope, kidding. Nope. Are we going to hear another uh, no, no, Michael, no, no, no. Michael no, J. Fox this, no, recording? No. no, he was handcuffed on the side of the 805 freeway near uh, Orange County. So huge, there was a huge- What's uh, the 805? What is that? Is that a real freeway? I never heard. You mean the 405? No, the 805. Wow. 805 freeway okay. near Orange County. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 12-year 12, 12 veteran, right? Uh, this firefighter was arrested because now the thing is when firefighters uh, they put they park their engines basically to yeah pick, they park them anywhere but they well, they do but there's a reason why they park them they want to protect the scene to protect them from cars yeah. if you're on a freeway you got moving traffic they block they take that truck they block it and a CHP officer said hey you need to move that truck it's like you're backing up traffic. He moves that truck. People can come in, pile in. Oh, you don't hit have to them, tell me. I, right? You're not even supposed to this argue officer with them. Absolutely, handcuffed them while he's trying to save these people's lives. Puts him in the back of his cruiser. Let me ask you something. This created such an uproar. Did anything happen detrimental as a result of the firefighter not being able to? No, every, do his everyone. Job? No, everyone survived. Um, he was actually released on the scene. From uh, so he he wasn't he wasn't charged, but he but this was caught on camera. Wow. Yeah, and who uh, came down? The lieutenant or something? Uh, I I don't uh, I don't think anybody. How old was the cop? I don't know. Rookie? They didn't say. Just, no, no, I'd this no this these. guy. Well, he seemed. I mean, he, he's really. I don't know. His mid forties, early fifties. What an idiot! Yeah, stupid. Uh, yeah, I, I was my, thinking he was twenty two. You, you know, hey, you know, unbelievable. Okay. Right. So here's the thing. Off. Tell me another story. We have, uh, how much time do we have here? We have two minutes before we bring on our guests. Here's, here's a good one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what? This is in Hawaii, right? Jennifer Jones was driving. Mm -hmm. Sees his SUV, go off the road, crash, okay? Flips on, its, um, flips on the side. Right. And this woman is hanging, the passenger is hanging out of the window. She pulls over like a good Samaritan would, right? Takes pulls this woman out. There's two other passengers in the SUV. Right. So the uh, the passenger to the driver gets out and um, basically asks the woman, the Samaritan, "Do you need a taxi?" Right. And the woman was puzzled. Why is this guy who just flipped his SUV asking me if I need a taxi? Uh, him and the other passenger basically took her car and stole her car and took off with it. While this woman's dragging this woman out of the, the seat. Now, long, make a long story short, this SUV that had flipped was actually stolen from a, a dealership. So these were thieves that actually stole the car. So they basically took this car, flipped it, crashed it, took this Good Samaritan's car. Wow. So the moral of the story is uh, take your keys when uh, you stop no. to help somebody. <laughs> the moral of the story is ride your bike. <laughs> ride your bike. <laughs> 
Okay, let's go to commercial. Yeah. Who? What were you thinking with Aaron and Scott? The show that gets to the core of all the bull. Thursday night, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. You know, we here at the studio are really athletic guys, and as a result, we're always pulling this, overstretching that. You know how it goes. You get hurt from time to time, or you just sleep wrong and wake up with some sort of ache or pain. But no matter what the situation is, we choose who we consider to be one of the best chiropractors in L.A., Dr. Chet Millett. Headaches, backaches, neck aches. He's the guy we trust with our pain. Dr. Millett is located at Body Structure in Hollywood, California on Cole Street across from Gold's Gym. Seriously, we know this guy. He's got the experience and expertise, and he cares. That's Dr. Chet Millett. Give him a call at 323-469-8062 or look him up on the web at bodystructurela.com or you can find him on Yelp. Dr. Chet Millett. He's the guy we trust with our pain. From the darkness below, an intense and thrilling game by the creators of AppCode Source, bringing the ultimate Gangnam game directly to your devices. Gangnam Speedrunner. Okay. Now available on your app store. Get ready to run. This app is rated G for Gangnam. Visit GangnamSpeedrunner.com. Okay. Uh, and we're back again. I just wanted to say uh, the, Scott's book, uh, Ridding Bicyclists. Uh, yeah, taking, Ridding Bicyclists. Yeah, taking matters into your own hands. Yeah, we're going to get rid of them all. It's yeah. time. It's time. And Aaron's book, Boys Town. That's right. Uh, it's about Boys Town. <laughs> <laughs> boys in town. Boys in a town. A town of boys. Anyway, yes. so let's introduce who we have here. <gasps> who do we Vanessa have? Vanessa Burgundy. Yes. And she is uh, basically, tell us what's going on. Angeline, we had Angeline on our show before, oh, and awesome. so some of our listeners know. And for some of our listeners who don't know who Angeline is, because we've gotten a lot more listeners since she was on the phone. Yes. Tell us in a nutshell about Angeline. Um, she's basically an L.A. icon and a good luck charm. And... She drives around in a pink Corvette, and everyone loves her. Show the <laughs> show the picture, John. Do you have a picture on? This is um, her new shirt that we're launching at the party, available exclusively at the Angeline Love Party that's on Valentine's Day. Okay, Very cool. Hot. Love it. And now the party, because nobody knows, we haven't said anything yet. Yeah, put it right there in front of you. Go. There you go. The party is. Uh, tell us about the party. Um, it's going to be at the Dragonfly on Valentine's Day. It's kind of... That's in, where? It's on Santa Monica and Wilcox in Hollywood. Okay. And it's... Everything is happening. Anybody interesting going to show up? Is it just a Everyone wild group? Everyone interesting is showing up. Really? <laughs> give us some idea. <laughs> give us give us a little idea um, for our listeners. We have the top burlesque performers in Los Angeles. Very we cool. Have, wow. Wow. Um, a lot of drag queens, some from RuPaul's Drag Race. Okay. Nice. Um, there'll be stripper poles, and the stock room is sponsoring. They're doing like a electro shock booth, and you can come play with their different attachments. Wait and, a minute. Oh, don't act like you don't know <laughs> what this is. No, no. <laughs> I don't know exactly what electro shock is at this club then you're gonna have fun at the party oh. you're gonna be electrically shocked like your nipples or what sure oh yeah. whatever uh, <laughs> your testicles oh yeah we can go there what yeah. a dirty mind what tell us more <laughs> just kidding there, there's gonna be a slapping booth if that's a what slapping, you're interested slapping, in also spanking Instead of a kissing booth, we're gonna have a slapping booth. Um, <laughs> like to slap your faces, <laughs> sure, your ass, whatever yeah. you want. Yeah, yeah. Pick the glove, pick wow. the place, and Angeline's gonna take a turn in the slapping booth, and she'll smack you. I, uh, su you I suggest walk. Scott, you wear your chaps. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your daddy? <laughs> that was funny. Oh my god, do it again. I like what. They <laughs> oh. God damn it! That I think that's the sound Scott's gonna be making as his Jeez. ass is getting slapped. I like that one. That <laughs> yeah. is funny. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We are going to get Angeline on the phone. Yay! So let's give her a ringy dingy and see what's going on with our lady in the pink. Court. It's been a while since she's been on the show too. So she uh, was on our show what? July? Yeah, I, I think it was July. Yeah, give or I take. believe so. She was fun. She's yeah, I'm for 45 fun. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's see. Let's play a trick. Hi there. <gasps> Who is this? Angeline, who's this? Hi, Angeline. This is Scott and Aaron, and hey. Vanessa's with us. Hi. Oh, hi. So she How's was just going. Good. How are you? Good. It's been a while. We were just talking. When were you on our show? You were on our show like July, right? I think so, yes. Yeah. We had a really, really good time when you were on here. So tell us. Tell, uh, Vanessa was just filling us in on the uh, on the party. Valentine. The she Angeline told, Love Party? Yeah. She told us about the electronic... Um, <laughs> electroshock? <laughs> electroshock. And the, spa- and the slapping. <laughs> What's that about? That's electric shock. <laughs> electric oh. shock. She didn't tell me anything about that, Vanessa. It's she's trying of... to get me over there to be shocked. No, it's one of our prizes from the stock room. That's it. I'm staying. I'm staying outside my car in front of my huge fifty foot billboard. <laughs> Yeah, we have a giant billboard out front of the club right now. Oh, you do? Wow. Yeah. On Wilcox and Santa Monica. Uh-huh, with this um, actual pose. Oh, nice. Now, Angeline, can anybody go to this party, or is this um, a, a list only, or who can go to this party? Only the sexy gods and the sexy girls. And sexy guys and sexy girls. If, if you feel like a sex god, or if you feel like a sex goddess, you're welcome. But don't show us if you don't. <laughs> okay. Is there a, is there a cover to get into this event, or is it free? I think it, Vanessa might know, but I know there's $14. a sex radar outside, For, okay. and if you don't register sexy, you don't get in. If you're super super hot, you know, Angeline, you said something to me. You said something to me the other day on the phone that just cracked me up. You said that people are asking you when this was, and you said on the, um, you said it's uh, Valentine's Day, and they said, "What what date is that?" And you said they're total I, idiots. <laughs> I didn't say that. I just said everybody was having a dumb blonde moment. There you go. It's like saying when's Christmas. I know, huh? I know. <laughs> when is no. it? No, you didn't. You didn't say total idiots. That's my translation. But I thought it was funny the way you told the story. That's okay. It's a guy thing. It's totally a guy. So thing. what? What are we to expect at this event? What's it going to look like? It's sexy. So you it's walk in. You, it's whatever you want it to be. Nice. See, the thing is, if you if you imagine the, the ultimate love party in your mind, and then you just walk right into it, you have to imagine it before you get there. Because I've never done a love party. This is a virginal um, party. For <laughs> a the virginal? First time. In other words, it's never been done before. Yeah, it's a, it's oh, a, it's so, a virgin. It's a I virginal it's a, uh, it's love a, party. So it could also okay, be called I hate a that word. You're party. Right. Because we're doing it now. Nobody should be a virgin, but it's a virginal <laughs> event. For the first time. So you have to imagine what you want it to be and then walk right into it. Oh. There you the go. Mind, hey, seriously, the mind is so powerful, especially when it comes to eroticism. Exactly. It's driving force. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So it's tell true. us, tell us, uh, so exactly where is this? What's the address? I know it's on Santa Monica and Wilcox, but what's the address? Mm-hmm. And it's called Dragonfly, you said? Yeah, it's 6510 mm-hmm. Santa Monica Boulevard. 6510 Santa Monica Boulevard, and it's on the 14th of February. Nine and for, for all you, you blonde moments out there that don't understand that, that's, <laughs> that's Happy Valentine's Day. That's right. And um, what time does it start? Doors are at 9 and show will start at 10 and it's the perfect valentine or anti-valentine party very so, nice so you either find your love there or you break up with your love or, or you go you there and you break and up and you find a new one you that's, find extra love and you find extra love that's right that's very cool <laughs> you can fall in love yeah so what when you say the show the show starts at 10 what what the, the burlesque um, or there's a drag show? drag a fashion show by jessica louise she's a los angeles designer wow. okay um, and does Jessica Louise do men's or women's or women. swimwear or just just everything? Okay, I, I, I'm not a fashion <laughs> we, guy. We I, all we all do she, everything she can, at this she party. She can put you in something hot for that party. <laughs> Swell. She'll, put, she'll make some chaps for you. Nice. Yeah. Is this a big club? I'm trying to. Remember. I th- I know where it is. It's 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 a good sized club. If I yeah, recall. it's fairly big. Yeah. Probably. Do you know where it is? Yeah. Yeah. It's oh. cozy. It is. We're it, gonna have it's, a perfect, it's a perfect place to make love. 
They are. There's lots of dark corners. Yeah. Mm. Oh. And a stage. And if, <laughs> if you want to get on stage and do what you do. Whatever that is. Uh huh. With <laughs> candle wax and a whip. Sure. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Angeline, did you hear me? I did one of your things. I went. Oh. I know. I talked you well. <laughs> <laughs> you sure did, baby. So, anything else you want to tell us about? Um, about uh, the 14th of February or with your life in general? Anything going on since we had you on last? Everything is going. It's not to the right. It's not to the left. It's forward, upward, and beyond. Beautiful. Ooh. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> you know what? I want you to mm. say something to us that really would be cool. I want you to say in your most interesting voice, what were you thinking? Oh, what were you thinking? Mm. Oh. With Aaron and Scott. Beautiful. That was <laughs> perfect, darling. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, okay. My gods and fairies. Okay. Thank, <laughs> thank you, darling. Big hug to everybody. May I do that? Yes. Big hug to everybody. Oh, cha cha. Bye, baby. <laughs> We'll see you on Valentine's Day. Okay. She is a sweetheart. That was perfect. (laughs) That was. That was perfect. Thank you, Vanessa. (laughs) Thank you. So very, very much. And um, Well, I can't wait. I can't wait to get shot and spanked. How are we uh, with... uh, Run one more commercial for us. You got one more. Okay. One second. All right. Beautiful. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Nice to meet you. What were you thinking with Aaron and Scott? The show that gets to the core of all the bull... Thursday night, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. In a world where developers compete to promote their apps, in a time where advertising is key to your success and profit on any app store, create stunning app demo videos with the voice heard around the world. Make your app stand out among the rest. For commercial use on websites, trailers, YouTube, and more, some restrictions may apply. Visit appcodesource.com and order your custom voiceover today. You know, we here at the studio are really athletic guys, and as a result, we're always pulling this, overstretching that. You know how it goes. You get hurt from time to time, or you just sleep wrong and wake up with some sort of ache or pain. But no matter what the situation is, we choose who we consider to be one of the best chiropractors in L.A., Dr. Chet Millett. Headaches, backaches, neck aches. He's the guy we trust with our pain. Dr. Millett is located at Body Structure in Hollywood, California on Cole Street across from Gold's Gym. Seriously, we know this guy. He's got the experience and expertise, and he cares. That's Dr. Chet Millett. Give him a call at 323-469-8062 or look him up on the web at bodystructurela.com or you can find him on Yelp. Dr. Chet Millett. He's the guy we trust with our pain. Hey, we're back. And uh, guess who got a bumper sticker? You can put that on the back of your car. Yeah, right over the dent where the asshole hit me today. That's right, the Indian. Nice Indian, though. I don't think it's going to be a bad dent. Oh, my neck. (laughs) (laughs) Who's hurt and needs ice? (laughs) I need ice and a blowjob, please. (laughs) I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't blow. <laughs> <laughs> only two wife. I only blow wife. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Who's here on a stick? Anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, so, it's always good to hear from Angeline. Oh, I'm, Angeline's cool. Yeah. She is a lover. Oh, anyway, she is. Anyway, this sounds like it's going to be really quite an interesting party. It's Angeline. So, so uh, It's going hello. to be interesting. She's got this big billboard. I'm going to go by and see that tonight. I know. On my way home. So, we have about, um, we got a couple minutes left. Anything really, really stand out with you on that list in that Sunday Anything paper? really stand out? Well, I mean, there's always, you know, all the stuff stands out. But uh, there was, actually, this is kind of a cute little story. There's a little girl. Her name's Chloe Sterling. Uh, she's 11 years old. <coughs> and she uh, kind of created her own little cupcake business. Well, good for her. Right out of her kitchen, right? Good out for of her. The, uh... <laughs> <laughs> She's such a cute little thing. <laughs> we love when she cooks. <laughs> Go ahead, that? honey. What's her name? Becky? Chloe. Chloe. What Close. Was that? Chloe, Becky, whatever. <laughs> Cook. <laughs> so anyway, little Chloe, she just loves making her cupcakes out of her uh, mom's kitchen and uh, out of her easy bake oven. No, no. 
These are those? <laughs> no. What kind? That's like sludge. No, I'm just I'm kidding. No, at, at it's a real kitchen. oven. Yeah, it's a real oven. Do they sell them? She was selling them. She needs a license. I know Chloe, she does. Well, you go down there to the proper department well, and this, you register for your this business little, license. I, this little girl, she was making some serious dough. And then she they was came making in. some dough for making the dough. Yeah, she yeah. well, she was charging ten dollars for a dozen cupcakes. And two dollars uh, for um, for each elaborate treat, so she can make like um, oh a cupcake. Okay, so what agency I, came in and shit all over her parade? Oh, the health department. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Chloe. Sorry, they say. said you need to either have your own bakery, uh, or yeah, yeah, you got you just yeah. you, you can't, can't just you, start making money and cooking. You hun. just can't start baking out of your kitchen and start no. selling to the public. No. But this girl did. Not going to happen. How old is she? Eleven. Eleven. Okay, well, well, she's eleven. You know, you gotta. I wonder if she made a lot of money. Well, they 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 didn't Chloe. say how much, but she made a lot. Chloe, if you're listening or watching, talk to mommy and ask if you can call us because we have some questions for you. I want to find out what happened with your business. <laughs> Next, <laughs> I think that's great, though. I think it's great. You know, I don't know. I had a paper route. Yeah. I'm sure she made more money yeah, than I did. Everybody had a paper route. I didn't have a paper route. You know what? I never wanted a paper route. I, I, did you even have a job when you were a kid? I had a lot of jobs, but not not a paper route. And what'd you do? Boring. You got to get up at okay. four in the morning and throw paper? What the How fuck? How old were you when you had your first job? Uh, was that when you were working at the grocery store pushing carts? No, 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 no. Yeah. No, I had jobs when I was 10 years old. Yeah, doing what? Yeah, watching people's dogs, mowing people's lawns. Okay. I did the real work. Not running around, throwing paper. Ta-da. Oops. <laughs> Mr. Wilson's window. Oops. <laughs> Mr. Thompson's car. Oops. Oh, stuck right in the puppy's butt. <laughs> that would be me. That would be. Not. Okay, not that way. Boys time. Go on. No, I want to talk more about your book. Uh, okay, how long? <laughs> where are we? How's Everything good? It's time to wrap. Oh, we got to wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Who's? (laughs) Your daddy. Okay, everyone. We hope we hear back from Wendy Hightail again. Or actually, I'm going to put a request out. Yeah. We would love to hear from a nurse. If you're a nurse out there and you're watching this show, I want you to call in because I want to talk about thermometers and bedpans. Scott's butt's been hurting him. He's got some questions.